Hi, and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to review a piece I read that was penned by Savannah Pete of the University of New Mexico, where she looks into the longevity benefits of resistance training. Now, the immense physical and mental benefits of exercise are undeniable, but the College of Education and Human Sciences at the University of New Mexico isn't stopping there. Researchers like Flavio de Castro Magalas, the director of the Exercise Physiology Lab, are pushing forward to look into cause and effect. He stated that my interest in exercise science began when I was a teenager. I always tried to exercise as much as I could and played soccer back in Brazil. When I got my undergraduate course in physical education, I got interested in exercise physiology and also in resistance training in general. Now, Professor Magalis is uncovering new connections between resistance training and insulin resistance. Before understanding why this connection is so critical, he highlights the beneficial role of resistance training in general by saying, resistance training is a type of exercise training that uses an external resistance for your muscles to forcefully contract against it, usually done with only a few repetitions and a high degree of effort. Adaptations usually include, of course, increasing strength and increasing your muscle mass. And we all know this as hypertrophy. Pushing up, pushing back, pushing forward or pushing down, no matter the direction. Having weighted resistance against your body promotes endurance, strength and also muscle mass. Resistance training, also known as strength training, can also be good for your health in general. It can reduce your blood pressure. It can be good for anxiety. It can be good for depression, for functioning in general and for treating and actually preventing type 2 diabetes. While resistance training also helps in flexibility, posture and your joints, Professor Magalus focuses on insulin sensitivity and resistance. It's all connected, he says. I use resistance training in my research to understand how it can improve one aspect of your health, which is insulin resistance, the opposite of insulin sensitivity. When people usually get sick or when they get metabolic problems, they get insulin resistant. This then predisposes them to prediabetes and eventually to type 2 diabetes. I use this resistance training to try and prevent that. Professor Magalus started his studies in Brazil where he recruited 15 individuals at risk of insulin sensitivity. These participants were all 35 years of age or over and moderately or severely obese. He said, we use participants that are at high risk of developing insulin resistance or are already insulin resistant. They have central obesity as well, which means that they have most of their fat stored around their waist. These characteristics predispose them to becoming insulin resistant and for that to then develop into type 2 diabetes. Each participant has an established baseline coming into the gym space for a control day where they conduct no activity whatsoever. This was also checked the day after the exercise to see if there was a change in insulin. He noted that we have to actually familiarize them in the gym for a few days before they actually do the testing. We then perform the exercise and the next morning we test them. They do the morning after show better insulin sensitivity. So that's pretty amazing for us to see. But the real work on both behalf of the researcher and the participants comes when the exercises actually begin. Professor Magalus chose each exercise to provide a well-rounded resistance-based routine that could be done repeatedly and quickly, saying it's a workout composed of what we call a whole body workout. We tried to target the major muscle groups in the body. We asked them to try to get as close as possible to a high degree of effort. So there are seven exercises in total conducted in three varying weight sets to make up a total of 21 exercises. Professor Magalus emphasizes that these are not only easy to find, but also easy to complete. He says, most of the time, people will tell you they just don't have the time to exercise. That's a good excuse. But when you're diving into the actual reasons, you end up seeing they just think that they're not able to do the amount of exercise or the type of exercise that they are asked to do. He went on to say that we are using these exercises to target the whole body. It's very simple, very straightforward. And these are exercises that people can complete in most regular local gyms. The exercises include the deadlift, the bench press, the shoulder press, the chest press, the leg press, leg curls, and also leg extensions. 
After each set of an exercise, the next round will include slightly more weight. More weight equals more resistance and therefore more benefit. We generally know this as progressive overload. Professor Magalus noted there are not as many variations, but it is possible to do it at home. We don't need that much space. So I think it's important for people to know that if they don't like aerobic exercise, they can do resistance training and still observe improvements in their health. Aside from the already clear health benefits, Professor Magalis is incredibly passionate about the exercise's other advantages because they are not static and they're not time consuming. He said, I think it's important for people to know that they have options. Aerobic exercise may not be the best option, so I want to be able to provide people with other types of exercise. In this case, resistance exercise, so they can have an option when it comes to choosing what they prefer to do to improve their health. Now, although the full analysis of the results has not yet been completed, early indications show a positive impact on insulin resistance. He stated, the data looks pretty good. It helps show that resistance training is beneficial to insulin or insulin resistance. In addition, the participants also had their own positive impact to report. In a confidence evaluation, those who completed the exercises felt more confident about themselves and their ability to be more active moving forward. He said they also had to rate their confidence on what they call self-efficacy, which is the belief that they can do something and this went up. He said by showing them that they can do resistance type training exercise and improve their health, they felt more confident and that they can continue with it. At the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with aerobic exercise. Years of studies have shown the benefits of what a few jumping jacks can do or even a run on the treadmill. Now, those improvements for your well-being still exist. But Professor Magalus believes the same gains can come from resistance training, saying the majority of research has been focusing on the effects of aerobic exercise when it comes to improving your health. Resistance exercise has been put aside in the past, but I want to show you can use resistance exercises, which have traditionally been used to get stronger and bigger muscles, to also improve your health. This for people who might not be interested in doing aerobic exercise. But if you're still not into these options, just remember that any exercise, no matter what it is, is going to be better than nothing at all. He closed by saying, I think it's very clear that in the last 80 to 100 years, we've seen a dramatic increase in health problems related to inactivity and to poor dietary choices. That leads to obesity and obesity related problems. I think my main goal is to try and provide people with options. Well, I hope you find that interesting or informative, hopefully both. If you follow the channel, you'll know that part of my longevity experiment and a way to extend my health span, I conduct resistance training three times a week at my local gym. Of the seven exercises mentioned in this study, I perform five. I do not do leg curls or leg extensions because both of those are classed as isolation exercises. So I prefer to do the Romanian deadlift and squat as a compound exercise alternative. But why compound exercises over isolation exercises? Well, compound exercises allow you to get a full body workout faster and to burn more calories. They allow you to lift heavier weights and therefore build more strength. They keep your heart rate up, thus providing better cardiovascular benefits. And they simulate daily movement. So they're classed as a functional fitness exercise. Let me know in the comments below, what resistance training do you regularly complete and how often do you actually do it?